the Sunday Sports Beat crew with you on a special uh, two to five uh, show today, and we're doing two to five because uh, it's a big tournament going on tonight. Tournament of Heroes uh, here at the College of Staten Island, um, a tournament that uh, gets huge recognition every year. Um, it is the uh, idea of. CSI Dolphins head coach Tony Patoza, and uh, he joins us right now on the phone. The head coach of the CSI Dolphins is Tony Patoza. Coach, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys doing? Great, great coach. And uh, I want to ask how you got, you're you doing personally after your team's 5-1 and one start. Again, uh, last year you guys had one hell of a run. It was a pleasure and honor to cover it. Um, and this year people were saying, well, you know what? They, they lost Tibbs. They lost Jordan. They lost... Uh, you know, a lot of other key players, how are they going to, you know, respond? How are they going to uh, work out? And you guys have started 5-1 and one to start off the 2012-2013 campaign. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, there's, there's no question. We're, we're definitely a very different team than we were last year. Um, we don't have as much ability uh, from 1 through, I'd say, 1 through 10 as we did last year. But the one thing that the kids have this year really done a very good job of is they've done a very good job of playing defense. Um, so, again, our, our big problem is putting the ball in the basket on a consistent basis. And if you look at our, if you look at our numbers, you can see that we're having problems putting the ball in the basket. Hey, Tony, this is uh, Chris Scott here alongside Soriano and Shane. Thank you for joining us once again. Quick uh, question for you. Coming into this 11th Annual Tournament of Heroes, if the three teams that are in it all combined, not great win-loss records. You guys, though, probably the heavy favorites of 5-1. and one. The team you're facing today, Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts, they're 3-6. and six. And then the other two teams have a combined record of 1-13. and 13. How confident are you feeling coming into this tournament? Uh, you know what? You gotta take one, take it one game at a time. You know, we've had we've had games in the tournament where we, I, I thought there were teams that we probably should have beaten that we didn't, and there were games that we probably shouldn't have won and we did win. So you gotta take it one game at a time. The, the tournament field, based upon win loss record, is not as good as it's been in previous years. But that's just really it was just a matter of it, you know that's how it worked out. Last year we had three teams that went to the NCAA's, two to the Sweet Sixteen, and one to the Final Four. And believe me, there's no way anybody could predict that. So it was just one of those things that's kind of worked out that way. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Uh, Shane here with uh, Chris and Chris. Um, I'm wondering, now, MCLA is scoring 82, just over 82 points per game. How do you how are you planning on shutting them down since you guys can only, are only managing 65.3? You said your defense is your better part of your game. How are you guys planning on shutting them down tonight? Well, I mean, our, our defense really generates our offense uh, and sometimes vice versa. Um, we just got to try to keep the tempo, control the tempo a little bit. We've had problems doing that on the offensive end. We've been better on the defensive end of controlling tempo. But we just can't get into track meet with them because they, they go like 10 deep and they're very athletic and they get up and down the court. Uh, if that happens, it's going to be a very difficult game for us to win because we just don't have that athleticism. It's 36 here on the uh, Sunday Sports Week Special Saturday edition, taking until 5 Eastern. Uh, we're joined by CSI head coach Tony Petoza. Uh Coach, tell me about the... Um, idea and how it came about uh, on, you know, forming this uh, Tournament of Heroes and really starting this thing, which has become uh, one amazing tournament every year during the holiday season. Uh, what what really went into starting this tournament? Well, you know what? I think the first thing that I kind of wanted to do was to do something um, if, in, honor of the, uh, in honor of the kids. And the first thing that we did was we tied the three kids' jerseys. Um, and, and you know what? I felt that after we had done that, it was a, it was a great night. Um, it was done in either mid January, mid February, um, the year after the, the uh, a few months after the towers had gone down, and we got a, an unbelievable uh, amount of support from the community. But I just felt that I, it wasn't enough. I felt that there was something I could do that might hopefully keep them, their memory alive. It, it, it just in, even if it was just in this area. Um, so I just tried to put together a, a, a holiday tournament. And invite some teams and hopefully get some donations. And the first, uh, to be honest with you, the first year, the outreach was was great. You know, we raised a lot of money to continue the tournament. Uh, and actually, right now, we're probably continuing the tournament because of the amount of money we got in the first few years, as opposed to what we've been raising as of recent. Those three names are Terrence Aiken, Scott Davidson, and Tom Hannafin. Now, one of, the, one of the questions I have, Coach, is how do you get these teams? What teams do you actually ask to partake in the tournament? Well, you know what? It's really become a word-of-mouth tournament. Um, I'm going to have to, unfortunately, I'm going to have to have a little bit different, different philosophy than I've had in the past. Um, we tried to get the, the best 
and the, the best teams from outside of this region. Um, we've had teams like Wentworth and, and, um, and um, that University of Dallas and uh, Gettysburg and uh, teams from... Um, uh, yeah, Illinois last year, I remember that. Illinois, Wesleyan, Bethany. Um, so there, we get a lot of teams from, from all over the country. Uh, as far as far west, so far, if I'm thinking correctly, is Ohio. Um, and, and as far west, I guess the Dallas is the furthest that we had at the University of Dallas. But the problem now becomes the NCAA has this regional ranking thing that teams have to be within 250 miles in order for that game to actually help you. Uh. So that's become a little bit of a problem. I, I, if I schedule three teams inside the, in this area, even if we win against a team that's ranked number one in the country, it doesn't help our rankings. Ah, uh, so does, wait, does that mean that if you get, if you were to uh, win tonight, would you get the win because it's against Massachusetts? Well, it, it, uh, yes. I mean, it, it goes into it. We'll, we'll call it an RPR, even that's not, what the, that's not what the NCAA calls it for us. It would because Massachusetts is in this region. Um, unfortunately, because of their record, unless they finish over five hundred, it doesn't help us as much. Uh, this is this is some of the things that goes into the actual pick in the NCAA tournament later on in the year, um, and one of the things that I definitely helped us last year is the fact that we had a couple big wins outside uh, of the CUNY. That we had teams that were very highly ranked in the region, and and more importantly for us, I think this tournament becomes a springboard to get us ready because get, whether or not these teams are that good record-wise, they all come from very good conferences. And because they come from good conferences, they might be getting beat up a little bit, but they're still going to be high-quality teams. want to just, uh, again, touch on this year's team coach, and again, starting off at a, a pretty nice 5 and one pace. Uh, what player this year to you has uh, been a little bit of a, of a surprise, maybe uh, someone that you, you really didn't expect uh, much of so far, and uh, through the first six games, he's, he's really been giving you something. Uh, who really has stood out to you uh, so far in these first six games? Well, you know what, I think it's really been a group effort. Um, it's hard to just pick one kid. But I think the kid that has to get the most, a lot of the credit, um, is Jonathan Chadwick Myers. Um, more so because of what, he, what we've asked him to do. Now, Jonathan, it was, when, he grad, when he came out of Port Richmond, was, was definitely, a, we knew he was a scorer. He's a kid I recruited pretty hard. Um, and then he decided to go to the junior college, and then after that, he was out of school for a few years. But the one thing that he's really done for us is, He's tried to play the point guard position for us, which is not an easy thing to do. I give a lot of responsibilities to my point guards. Um, so for him to control the team, it's been it's been a little bit up and down, you know. But he's he's played hard. He's very good on the ball defender. Um, now the big now the big question becomes with Blucci probably coming back to, uh, today. Well, he actually probably he is coming back. With Blucci coming back, can those two coexist in the backcourt? and share the ball and make us a better offensive team. If they do, then, then we could be ahead in the, real, in the right direction. I was just going to ask you, Coach uh, Bellucci, uh, coming back tonight, uh, you know, and what, what better way again to come back and, you know, the primetime 7.30 game here at home uh, in, in the tournament. Uh, what are you expecting from uh, Bellucci tonight in his first game back? Um, I hope he doesn't shoot the ball in the first five seconds he's in. Which is not going to be easy to stop him. Part of the reason is he might make it. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. Um, he, he's a, an exceptional talent. He really is. And sometimes I kind of have to let it go a little bit. But it's not easy for a coach to give up control. I want you to know that. So, uh, you know, but he does have an exceptional ability. But if him and Jonathan could coexist and share the ball and help other kids, uh, on our team, then we become a better offensive team. If he, if they can't coexist, then you know what? They might it, it, it could co create a little issue with us in terms of how well we move the ball. Because what, regardless of our record, we have really tried to play together, and that's and that's why we're doing pretty well. God, <laughs> Coach, uh, we can't thank you enough for hopping on uh, with us for a few minutes tonight. And again, good luck tonight. We'll have full coverage of the game tonight. If you can't make it, I mean, if you can go down, it'll be a great night tonight, great atmosphere. If you can't make the game, that we got it on eighty eight point nine uh, for anyone that can't make it. Coach, good luck with the game tonight. Thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. No problem. You too, Coach Petosa uh -huh. of the CSI Dolphins five and one CSI Dolphins.